Now what we're building behind me is a cabana. It's going to look super dope. They currently have steps on the other side. We are going to move it on this side. <music> A little bit of foreshadowing I had this morning when I was all excited getting ready for hardscape and pavers. Now the reason we do that with the filter fabric is so that we can create a division between our grade and the subgrade. There's just a little bit of a teeter right here. We have a broken skid steer. We have one more month of warranty on it, so if this broke literally one month later, we would have been out nine grand to fix a part. And we actually take a grinder and we chamfer our cut edges as well. That way it just all looks uniform. Man, these things are heavy. See if she fits. Moment of truth. This cabana is about to get thrown down. We got that man taking the lead. Oh. Good morning, back on site. It is Monday, so happy Monday to everyone. Let me show you guys what we got going. Let's do our traditional reveal that we haven't done in a while. Ooh, that looks a lot different. So as you can see, we have our cabana posts up. We have our beams spanned across. X brace, just so that everything stays nice and level. Uh, so the framing is going to get wrapped up today. Uh, we're gonna get the ceiling joists done. We're gonna get plywood on the ceiling, get that ready for shingles, absolutely Beautiful, stunning, gorgeous, huge, megalithic. The pavers are gonna come up to about that height. Um, so we'll have about 11 feet ceiling over here. It's going to be grand oise. It's going to be absolutely stunning. It's gonna capture your eyes. It's gonna look beautiful, wrapping it in composite so it looks much, much nicer. Uh, the retaining wall is gonna get wrapped up today. As you can see, we kinda got all that done the other day we still have that side to finish completely and this side to finish we had run out of retaining wall pieces so i picked some of that up this morning that way we can finish this get the coping done get that done uh, but yeah this one's really starting to turn out hopefully we'll be finished pavers by wednesday today's monday so in two more days i'm giving us to have all the pavers finished cut wrapped up put all into place that way we can start getting on the small little punch list loose odds and ends and get all that finished but y'all stay tuned on this project All right, so a little bit of a progress update on the cabana back there. Flip that around. All of the ceiling rafters are hand cut. Now they're just getting laid out on a 16 inch spacing and they're going around, putting them in, nailing them down. That way we have our ceiling joists. That way we can put plywood on top, shingles on top of that, prevent any rain from making its way in the cabana. Yeah, 
I'm happy with a pergola like this. I want to do something like this at my house. Off the deck. All right, YouTube, I'm about to walk you guys through a solution to the problem that we had the other day. So again, if I show you guys this, and you see here, no funny business, all right? We don't play games. If I tape on that and I go across, we are at 28 minus a 16th of an inch, okay? And if I do the same up here at the top, again, no funny business and I come up, boom, 27, 5 eighths. It's pretty much a quarter inch off square, which is nuts. Um, but the way we're able to work around that is, I have my string on one side set up. So you can see I got my string there. So the front of this is going to be perfectly level or perfectly straight. The back side, unfortunately, won't be. It'll have a little bit of, uh, of play just because of the fact that the pieces aren't put together properly. But what this means is now I have to measure every single piece and each side that's 28 inches, I have to put on the face and each side that's not 28 inches, I have to put on the back. Uh, that's a little work around around this product. I'm not really sure how such a massive company would be even able to produce something quarter inch off square. Uh, it's a little bit mind blowing, but nonetheless, what can you do? Besides from move on and figure out a way to make things look good. I take rap when I take hot. Ah, frustrations, frustrations. Look at that. Look at that. You see? Top's good. You can see the top's good. Look at that. Look at that. Super freaking frustrating. You buy such an expensive product. I mean, it looks fantastic. Don't get me wrong. It's sealed and everything, but like, come on, just build a better product.
the black market stopped using Bitcoin because it's fully trackable. Now that the ceiling rafters are on, throwing down some plywood. That way we can, like I said, get our shingles. So we're just up there, throwing the plywood on. Leaves it overhanging on one side. That way you can just snap a chalk line and cut straight on the spot and have to cut every piece individually. Same thing on that side. <laughs> Check it, we're on the roof. Oh, 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 you're on the roof of YouTube. Again, just going around shooting his shots. A little deafening. And just a bit more to go up here. The lights on. Mic check, one, two, one, two, uh, uh. Check it, I'm on top of the cabana, uh. Cabana is almost finished framing. Some minor stuff we still gotta do. Still gotta waterproof this top put a wall in the back that way they can mount a TV mount some speakers we still got to put pot lights up in the ceiling get the electrical run some GFCI plugs but it's gorgeous just look at it just look at it All right, I'm about to walk you through a problem that's extremely frustrating. I'm really pissed off right now. And it sucks, it sucks, it sucks. So we have, like you can see our string line, everything's perfectly straight. So there's, you know, it's not like we're not straight causing these gaps. And let's just do a little bit of a side pen. Check that out. It's tight there, huge gap at the back. It's tight there, huge gap at the back. tight there huge gap at the back now some gaps because at the end of the day the product I spoke to the manufacturer and they said that's the product that is what it is um, so not the whole skid or all the material that came out was built out of square some of them were good pieces so when you put a good piece next to a little piece sir you might get a little little tiny sixteenth of an inch eighth of an inch gap um, and they're saying that it's a travertina product it's meant to mimic a natural stone so it kind of complements it okay sure fine a little tiny eighth of an inch gap not acceptable in my books but at the end of the day the product is as you can see a little bit more rough um, so it kind of has that look there um, but now that we're getting kind of towards the end of the skid, that's our skid there. We have all the good pieces set apart as you're looking at that center of the screen right there. And then to the left of it, you can see that bigger pile. Those are all the pieces that are out of square. Now I need all the pieces that are perfectly square for the pool coping because you can't have, like it's just not acceptable at pool coping to have gaps like that. Um, so I separated them, I got the boys to separate them, and now we're kind of a bit on the end of it. So that is translated to, like I said, these gaps at every single piece. It's unacceptable. Um, let's, let's take some measurements and show you guys again. See, that's 28. And then if I measure here, it's completely different measurement. Every single piece is like that. Um, crazy. The way around this that I see best fit is to cut this so that it is square. We have a nice table saw there so it cuts perfectly straight lines. Uh, if it wasn't for this table saw, I definitely wouldn't be able to do this right now. I'm okay, I'll just have to hand it. And this thing doesn't bend over or go upright. Honestly, if this thing was upright, it'd make me so much happier. Let's see if it's like magically fixable. Yeah, it was hard as shit for you. Yeah, no, that ain't happening. So what if I put this like that, and those would be two square sides. Should be touching. That might eliminate one of the gaps. Okay, 
And now this side is the side that is not square. So it's going to touch here, but not here in the front. Let's go, baby. Okay, it works. All right. Kind of figured it out. So, some of, I don't know how to explain it. So you have a right side and a left side on each block. Some of them, the left side isn't square, and then some of them, the right side isn't square. Um, it's, not, it, it's not perfect in terms of the quantity that are on the left side and the quantity on the right side, but I'm getting to a point where if I'm thinking and I'm analyzing where is square and where is not square, I can attempt to meet them up. Um, sometimes it doesn't work just because they're both not square in the same spot and the back sides are square. So you'd have to do like a complete reverse flip, flip it upside down as well. But I'm getting something here, getting progress. I mean, do we pen that real quick and you can see that we've closed a lot of the gaps. Um, some of them are still a little bit, but I mean, I'll take a little bit over a quarter inch any day of the week. So we, we've managed to figure it out to some extent. A little bit of ingenuity and just not settling for less, but we're getting it. Okay, so this side is square and this side is not square. Um, although that's the long point over there. Where's the long point over here? 27, so the long point's here. So if I turn this around, where's the long point? 27, 28, that should work. Should work, get in progress. Oh, but we're met by this insane height difference. Look at that. Slowly but surely we'll be getting it. Yeah, that's crazy, man. <laughs> so I've minimized it. I hope nobody in the world spends eight years in school trying to learn out of frame. Could you imagine? So because these pieces are not square, let's see how bad off we are all the way here. 22 and an eight, and that's 22 and a half. Again, the typical quarter inch out of square. Beautiful, beautiful. Nice, perfect, perfect, perfect cut. Perfect, absolutely perfect cut. No dust in your face. You're not hunched over with a massive concrete saw hurting your back. None of that. You just lay it down and you cut straight. For anyone that knows construction, I picked this up this morning, I died laughing. So if you know PL Premium, very similar branding, very similar, I guess, name. These guys called it BL Platinum. I picked it up, I thought it was really funny. So anyone that knows construction, you might get a chuckle out of that. All right, YouTube, just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a comparison and a little bit of a progress update. So I'm doing coping now, we're throwing down coping on their wall. And I just wanted to take a moment and point out how much better an ICF pool is, an insulated concrete pool is compared to a fiberglass. So. As you can see, we're gonna throw up a clip here now of us putting up some plywood. When we put up the plywood, that gives us nice straight forms and edges to be able to um, pour perfect concrete. We then smoothen it out with a trowel and this is the finished result. So everything is like perfectly smooth. Let's see. Everything is perfectly smooth. There's no teeter point. So when we put down our coping, we're able to actually just fly with it. 
It's a much, much quicker install when you have a nice, perfect base to work on. You're not shimming and playing and pulling up and putting down and it's just no headache. So we're just gonna run with this. It'll be done in probably like 10 minutes, 15 minutes in all honesty. I just wanted to give that little bit of a shameless plug on our insulated concrete pools because you know, fiberglass, we're coming for your throat. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of an update and a little bit of some explanations because I owe you an explanation. <laughs> Joking. So we got two pieces again, one on that end, one on that end. We set that at our desired cantilevered overhang. On this one, we're doing an inch and a quarter just because they have the track here and the Coverstar Canada recommended that we don't go an inch and a half. He said it's better if you keep it on the shorter side. So that's what we're doing, keeping a bit on the shorter side, an inch and a quarter instead of an inch and a half. That's gotta get cut. I got our two pieces, run the string, that way we can have a nice, perfect reference point. Throw it down again, check with the level. You've seen us do it a few times now, but just gotta give you a little bit of a, an update. So I took my first measurement because this one has to get cut and I have 22 inches, so I marked 21 7 eighths on that piece. Now, because I have a string line that's going to represent the face of it, I know how far back this needs to get cut. So I'm getting a measurement of 11 and 8. So I'm gonna come over here, and I'm going to come up 11 and an 8. Actually, I'm gonna do 11 because I wanna keep a 1 8 gap consistent. And then, because I have those two points and I have a handy dandy square, I can just take my marker, sorry, my crayon, and mark this up. And I know if I cut this, that it should fit there. That's what we're about to do. That was a dope cut. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. All right, let's get into the shadow. Look at that. Bang. Uh, so that's going there. So I have to come out four and a half from up here. Four and a half. Bang on. And then this was, I say, 11. Bang on. Then I come up here and I do 11. You're dead, son. You're dead meat. Yeah, boy. Oh, I don't like that, man. I don't like that, man. Now, the question is, do I try to cut that or... I just leave it. I mean, it looks really good. Well, it's a little thicker here than it is here. That should give it just enough room. To close the gap a bit here and make the gap a little bit there. Ha ha. Let's push that up. Push that this way. I like that. I think that's acceptable. You think that's acceptable? No. No? Good here, not my pool. Shit. All right, that's it, boys. I'm done. I quit. So, do you know why women give birth on their backs? I wonder if that's why we overhang, like the same principle is why we overhang the coping so we don't pinch our fingers. I wonder if it's become like a rule of install for like the installer. Because aside from that, and maybe to hide any imperfections, I guess, in the wall, also it makes sense.
Morning YouTube, check it. Nice view up here, eh? A little bit of a morning update. Roof is finished, cabana's all framed. We have our shingles that are going down up top. We got some drip edge over there. Just laying out the drip edge. Retaining wall is all finished. And pretty much today we are gonna be throwing down some pavers, at least a little bit of pavers. We're waiting on our material to get final grade done. So once we get final grade done, we'll be off to the races with pavers. Uh, so today is just um, getting this roof done, some more framing that needs to get done, some steps, etc., and getting the final grade ready for the pavers because it's about to throw down. Besides from that, not much else going on. So enjoy the show. What up YouTube? Materials here, right there. So it's time to start throwing down some grade, baby, because there's levels to this. But um, we're gonna be swapping out the forks. Grabbing the bucket. Now, we'll be grabbing some of this bad boy. Now, for anyone that is in the construction landscape industry, sorry, landscape construction industry, that machine there is a stand-on skid steer, but it is operated for 3,200 pounds lifting capacity at a maximum height of 118 inches in the air. So we spec this bad boy out with a one-yard bucket, as you can see there, pretty much carries just under one yard at a time. Pretty sick, man. At this exact moment in time is we're using laser level the laser level is over there it's shooting out a nice flat line and then that way we are able to have a flat line that we can measure down from um, because again the ground is uneven so we set a flat line on top and then we're measuring down from that flat line that's essentially what we're doing now so I have from the laser level to this uh, top of coping and I have that set on my rate list receiver and now because we have top of coping uh, we need to go down so that way when we lay our pavers the top is all smooth so i just benchmarked for the top of coping i am now going to adjust my grade rod using math 
so I know that my pavers are two inches and three eighths. So I'm going to adjust this accordingly. That way. So I take it, I'll move it right there. So now, because I've taken the top of this coping over here, and I've transferred that there, and then I've measured the opposite way, I now know where my final grade should be. So because I have that now referenced somewhere I can check, I just go around, we have these bars in place, and we start checking these bars. So I go around and make sure that all the bars have to come up. You can tell the difference based off of the two tones. I'll turn this volume up for you guys to hear. Is that off? There we go. So fast me just got to go up, so I'm good there. That's got to go up, so I'm good there. That's got to go up, so I'm good there. And then pretty much I do that everywhere. I check all the bars. That's got to go up. I've already done these. I know they got to go up, so I'm not going to waste my time going through it again. But once we have all that set up, we then go around and get another piece in on the back. These have a nice male and a female in them, so it makes the transition is perfect, which I really, really like. All about that quality. So we'll take this, again, we'll just gently slide it in place. And then now I have a nice, perfect transition point, and then I can just continue that rod on. So now that I know every single paver, or sorry, every single bar is under where it's supposed to be, below, I should say, I go around and I just put my laser level down and I start lifting these bars until it's all perfect. Um, so over there, it's got to go down a bit, but before I hit that down, I'm going to come on this side. I also spread little shovels of this stuff called HPB, high performance bedding, down. That way as I lift, material goes under it, holding it in place. So just like this, see it's got to go down a bit. Okay, so that's gonna go down a bit. This has to go down a bit. And this has to go down a bit. So, now I just gently tap tap. Let me see what it says. Let's turn that to fraction mode. There we go. Okay, it's got to go down one eighth of an inch. Bang. Bang. So we're perfect there. Now I'm going to go to the middle. Check it. It's got to go down. How much does it say? It's got to go down quarter of an inch. One sixteenth. So it's just a little, little. Yeah, there we go. One sixteenth is honestly pretty much the thickness of a hair. Uh, so you don't really want to move it too much at a sixteenth. What does that say? It's perfect. Perfect. So now this bar's set. I'm just going to go around one last time, check it. Bang. Bang. Perfect. That's pretty much it. I just go around at every single bar, I lay them, I connect them, and I just go with the laser level. I make sure everything is bang on perfect. That way our final grade is like glass. Very, very nice. Now, take in mind, sorry, let me just turn this down. You have to take into consideration the fact also that the pavers have manufacturing differentiation. So the thicknesses of the pavers are not all the exact same. So that's why sometimes you get the odd paper that sticks up a little bit. You gotta try to hammer it down, mallet it down just to make it a bit nicer. That's gotta go up. Bang. 
bang. That's perfect there. It's good there. Bang. So again, that's the idea of it. After everything is all leveled, you go around again with your HPV, you cover it, and then you just kind of pack underneath the bar gently. You just try to push the material there. That way, when you take your two by, or sorry, your level, and you drag it across, as you're pushing weight down, it's not gonna flex on you because it has stability and um, something holding it from underneath. So that's what we do. We just go around, pack our bars. That way, when you push down, nothing. It's just staying right there. That's how you set grade. That's how you do final grade. And then we start throwing down pavers, baby. Look at that ninja, man. Almost perfect. I don't say perfect because these bars are not perfect. But I do my due diligence. Good morning, YouTube. Back on site. Today is Thursday. We did not do anything yesterday. I left my microphones at home, so I apologize on that. And yesterday was honestly, it was like 42 degrees. And by the end of the day, I was so dead. I just did not have energy for anything. So let's do our handy dandy walkthrough. It's been a while since we've been one of these. As you can see here, we have the back wall of our cabana. We're putting a TV there. That's why there's all that backing. We're throwing electrical up. So electrical is gonna go in that wall today. Then we're gonna backfill it all. That way we can feed the TV, feed some GFCIs. That way they can plug in speakers, whatever they want in the plugs. We're also gonna be powering some pot lights up in here. So this is where we're putting our pot lights. They're getting six pot lights, two, four, six. And as you can see, we have pavers down, baby. We got pavers down yesterday. Yesterday was paver day. Finished the final grade. We got all of our pavers down. Pavers are done over there as well. Uh, we're just wrapping up our way, working our way back. So we're finishing over there. We don't start from there for a few reasons, because if we were to start from there, we don't really know how we're gonna end up here. So I came, I started at this corner to make sure that we have full pieces near the pool as well as that we can insert our border without any awkward cuts or awkward transitions. So that was the first piece that got installed and then we worked our way that way and then came this way. So today we're just wrapping up over there. Uh, we'll be getting the borders down in here, making our few cut pieces. Uh, we got to finish framing some stuff up there. We're kind of at that awkward stage in the project where like you're almost done, but there's still so much, I guess not small things, but Technically, I guess small things, you know, it's still quite a lot to do, um, but for visual progress, we're pretty much done. So yeah, we're just at that awkward stage now. So I guess these updates won't be as intense day by day because the job is pretty much finished. As you can see, we got the pool. We still got to wait for the liner. We got our wall all done. But yeah, that's it. A little bit of a morning update for you guys. So continue to watch the show and we'll keep you guys posted on how this one's going. for some sort of large format that works with a grab-up and just never have to bend over to lay a paper again. Dude, my back would be f***ing thanking me.
YouTube. I'm out here looking like a madman. We're throwing down pavers. Again, these pavers have some issues as well. Nothing drives me more insane than not being able to install a bang on product. So these pavers, the reasoning again, the manufacturer says is because it's a natural, or sorry, it's meant to mimic natural stone. So it's supposed to be a bit more imperfect, but I don't like that. Like, I mean, I don't think anyone likes that. You're not supposed to install something that's imperfect. It's, it's silly. If you have straight lines, you're supposed to be able to see straight lines, not jagged lines because the product isn't square. So again, now I'm here like an idiot looking like I do terrible work and I'm sitting here with the level trying to iron out at least one side of it. So at least the one side is straight and the other side kind of will have imperfections because again, some are a bit wider than the others. So you can't have everything perfectly straight if you have two different widths. It's frustrating. It's super annoying. Clean it off. Like what the f is wrong with you guys? Like it's smaller on both ends. Like, like how is that possible? Here, I'm, I'm gonna grab the camera. So you see there, let me get my shadow out the way. Right there. You got the one piece that is a bit longer than the other. And then you go up top and again, the same piece is longer. So I can't make a perfectly straight line. It's impossible. It's perfect here. It's not perfect in the middle. It's perfect here. It's got bows in it. Ah. Okay, let's get the next one. Good morning, YouTube. It is Friday, we're back on site. We haven't done much content the past two days. It's been like 39, 41 degrees again. Check that for Fahrenheit. I don't know what Fahrenheit is, but it's been hot. You're working hard, you're sweaty, you're tired. The last thing you really wanna do is kind of whip out the camera and do that. So, we're back on the grind today, the content grind for you guys, and to show you a little bit of what we got going on. We got our pavers down all the way out here we still have a few cuts to do on this side to close all that off we got our pavers down here this is getting a border and then more coping goes there we can't do the border or the coping until coverstar comes back in if you remember they were here doing the track system over there over there they put this housing this housing will get some sort of mounting clip mounted on the side and they put one at every seam of the coping. That way we could just put the coping directly on top. And in the future, when we need to access this motor or this cover, that just comes right up and they get access to it. So we can't put our border on this side until they come put the clips. That way we can put the coping, then we can put our border. So that will not get done, unfortunately, until pretty much at the end of the job. So it's gonna look a little unfinished here, which eats at me a little bit, but what can you do? And then after that, we started throwing down our Antica because, oh man, just look at that. Looks gorgeous. Nice, beautiful black cobblestone style paver next to a nice, beautiful, natural stone looking travertina paver. Again, these pavers, I had issues the same with the coping. Different thicknesses, different sizing, which means that there's imperfections on the ground which means that we just have to spend a lot more time going around and playing with things, trying to make it look perfect. Almost impossible to get it 100%, which eats at me. Uh, but nonetheless, on the grand scheme of things, it looks stunning. It really does look beautiful. It's a beautiful texture, beautiful finish, beautiful color. And then when you match it with that black Antica, which is this, 
just looks stunning. So we're wrapping the Antica around and then that Antica also goes under the cabana. That way when you're kind of sitting here looking at your gorgeous cabana, you look down, that black Antica wraps in there. So that's what we're getting done today. We will be finishing laying our stone in here. So we have this giant bundle of pavers behind me. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Y'all stay tuned for some progress. All right, YouTube, just a little tip of the trade for anyone that does this Antica paver. So these pavers always have little minor differentiations in thickness, whether it's a 16th or an 8th. And because they're so small, it's really easy to step on them wrong or uh, you, you'll just feel tiny, tiny little imperfections under your feet. So what I like to do is I will get this sheet of plywood right there. I'll lay that plywood over there and then I grab, where's my other tool? It's somewhere. Oh. Um, no, I don't know where it is. A little hand tamper, a little plate hand tamper. Put that down and then I'll just go around tamping the plywood. That way everything kind of become flush and nice and level. There's no little, you know, differentiations in that. So check it out. This is how I do it. Again, YouTube, I'm kind of just feeling a little bit as well. Uh, I think this is, what, half inch? Yeah, this is half inch plywood. So it's not thick enough to the point where it's just, you know, one unified thing. Like you can kind of feel under your feet where you don't really like it too, too much. So I'll just come back and knock her down a little bit. And that is how you get out some of those imperfections. End of day update, it's Friday today. Again, we didn't really record too, too much. It was just a lot of, you know, putting your head down, making cuts, doing awkward little stuff. And it took all hands on board, so I could not get on the camera and show some stuff, so I apologize for that. But let's show you what it looks like. 